Hello, everybody, and thank you for inviting me for this conference. I will provide you with a short overview of the activities in uh, the Republic of Serbia regarding education reform and also e-learning. Uh, there are new key priorities of education reform, which are uh, equity, quality, and competitiveness, and efficiency. In the uh, last uh, two years, uh, we had a lot of changes. New laws, new rule books, new bodies, new standards, a lot of dynamic uh, and, uh, activities, and this is very promising. I will not go into details. Uh, you probably already heard a lot about uh, education uh, community efforts to improve its system. Also, at the moment, um, our ministry is organizing uh, preparation of the comprehensive education reform strategy that uh, is prepared by nine uh, expert groups. Uh, first uh, draft will be available at the end of October. Uh, then it is planned to have uh, international peer reviewing for the each uh, part of the document, then uh, to organize uh, public discussions in 10 cities of, in Serbia, and then to adopt uh, such strategy. Therefore, this uh, conference comes at the right time because I am partly afraid that e-learning is not a priority or uh, practically implemented uh, or put uh, in this uh, strategy. So it should be this uh, information that I got from this conference and also um, strategies that other countries developed will be very useful for us to, to, com to complement our uh, plans. Um, may I have a presentation going? Or I should pre just press something, right? Which one? OK. I didn't. Okay, I didn't take this uh, class prior to my presentation. So this one. Okay, these are projects that are ongoing now. It started this year. These are Ministry of Education and Science projects. They are mainly donor driven and donor supported. This means that we don't have enough money from our budget to. Uh, finance our reform. So these are IPA projects, World Bank projects, then we have donor funded projects, but I think in few years donor uh, will withdraw from Serbia, which is uh, in one way good sign and a bad sign. <laughs> we won't have these resources, but the good sign this means we are not poor country anymore. Then we have initiatives and support from IT companies. The, you know probably all these uh, programs of uh, Microsoft, Intel, Cisco. Uh, everybody are very active and helpful in Serbia. Tempus projects also for higher education. Then we have uh, projects of the Ministry of Culture, Media, and Information Society uh, that is dealing with infrastructure. Uh, these are IPA projects that uh, started this year. They are all... Um, in certain education sector, but ICT is, is a component of all of this project, more or less, in certain areas. Either is equipment or database development, uh, depends on a project. Uh, another two IPA projects. And new projects are also under development. Then World Bank project is dealing with inclusion. This is a top priority of the ministry to develop inclusive education system. So f in this project, we have a, a lot of funds, and the funds in relation to ICT will be spread in two components. One component is related to children with special needs, assistive technologies, and second component is education management information system development. This is, to be honest, the second time that we are trying to develop functional education management information system. We failed few years ago, and I hope we will get it soon. And I was very surprised when I heard and happy that Siveco participated in several projects uh, for this, uh, de this development and successful also, because last year I did small research and I learned that there are 40 countries who wasted their funds and did not uh, manage to develop such system. Uh, uh, this is all f thanks to, to uh, 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 that's database develop, something development, I don't remember now. It's available uh, on the internet. Uh, then 
There is uh, only one project that I would mention that was national, but also donor-driven and donor-supported, e-learning program for higher education institutions in Serbia from 2005-2011. As some of you may know, the uh, FAR program that was implemented in 30, 13 countries of Central and Eastern Europe, but Serbia was one of the countries that did not participate. So the program of um, very, with very small resources of, uh, is tr try to, let's say, complement and to uh, catch up with the, uh, others that uh, had this uh, tremendous opportunity to share and develop distance education programs in Central and Eastern Europe. And this program proved to be very successful as it was designed carefully uh, to be extremely demanding for university professors and to be uh, l driven by local, um, let's say, local people. And also, um, as I participated in monitoring uh, at the end of this project, all professors reported that they achieved more than 120 to 150 percent of what they planned. This means that they uh, achieved much more, and I uh, believe me, they were offered a very small amount of uh, money to do this. I can tell you more about that if, if you are interested later on. It's not. Then Tempus, I think it's Tempus project. Okay. But, uh, Tempus project now it's ongoing. Ministry is also partner in this project. Uh, it's about quality assurance in distance education. We had some, and we still have some uh, problems with distance education uh, quality at higher education institutions, and we hope with this project it will contribute to improve uh, the quality. Okay. This is the ministry that is dealing with the infrastructure. They are at the moment equipping schools this is also a second attempt to equip schools. A few years we failed, and now this ministry su succeeded. The reason is because we are transition and uh, politically unstable country, so some of the projects do get, uh, su are successfully implemented, as some of them are not. But now 95% of primary and uh, secondary schools will get these cabinets, and uh, all, they are all connected to internet, and also, they will get some training, some basic trainings in how to use uh, this um, selected software. Um, but then what I um, was thinking about yesterday and uh, today is uh, how can we develop this common vision? And I must say I learned a lot at this conference. And what I would uh, share with you or suggest is that we need more uh, evidence, like evidence synthesis reports, as Mr. Theodor Milev mentioned and asked, uh, is this really needed still? Yes, I believe it's needed because we, in order to shape a good quality education policy, we need overviews of many uh, research reports, how this really uh, is a, a affecting student achievements and how it's really cost benefit. Um, so I also was pleased when I heard from Irina Sokoli that Mrs. Irina Sokoli that we will she will work on impact assessment of all these e-learning or some e-learning projects. This is this would be also for us uh, very important to have. Then I think we need strategies based on evidence. So there are now in uh, I, I know for seven brokerage agencies that provide evidence that provide the synthesis of evidence uh, research from uh, four ministries of education in uh, developed countries. I, do, I don't think that Central and Eastern countries have such agencies, but this is something I think on the way and very important. These uh, uh, reports are good basis for any strategy development and planning also. I think we would uh, need more research on student needs and children's needs. Um, then um, we need particularly to be careful when we target some 
specific target, target groups like young children or early school, uh, or, uh, children at preschool, because uh, we need to be well informed about the, their needs in terms of psychological needs. And because if when I heard about uh, the idea to work on this level, I, I would uh, first ask uh, education psycho psychologists and psychologists to say what are the main characteristics for this age, because I, if I remember well from literature, that uh, children need uh, human touch and social contact. This is the crucial for their early uh, child development. Then that, that means more evidence and more research. Then um, transparency and openness about good practices, but also about failures. For example, if you know this e university, uh, e virtual university of UK, the government has spent 130 million of euros and the uh, everything was ruined. This was not a successful project. Thanks to them, we have it published. It's, it's available. You can see what were the mistakes. Uh, then um, it's, I would call for pedagogy-driven rather than technology-driven innovations. Uh, but also, we can have specific topics, problems in education. For example, uh, dropout, problem with uh, dropout students, and then how you can use technology to prevent dropout and to uh, allow better access. Also, I learned two very important things that I would like to share with you. First is I would never put my laptop is in the conference bag. And the second would be I would like, even I work in the Ministry of Education, I would like to work in the Ministry of Education in United Arab Emirates, even under the threat of getting fired. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>